there's a very encouraging verse in Galatians chapter 6 and verse 9, and it says, Let us not grow weary while doing good, for in due season we shall reap if we do not lose heart. A farmer has to be persistent if he's going to get a crop. And there's a fascinating story told in the early life of D.L. Moody when he had first moved to Chicago and he was working finding children for the Sunday school and a businessman had been saved and told him about a particular family that he was very burdened about. And so Moody went to see the family and discovered that they lived above a saloon and that the father actually ran the bar in the saloon. The man was very angry, very upset that he would come and said, I rather would have my boys drunkards and my daughter a harlot than go to your Sunday school. Most of us would be (laughs) put off by that and not return, but Moody returned a second time and the man seemed slightly less hostile and the third time The man said to him, you seem so eager to get my children to church. What we ought to do is have church right here, and I'll bring some of my friends, and we can have a session right down here in the saloon. And Moody said, well, as long as we have a definite time, and uh, so I know when to be here to speak. And he said, well, you come at 11 o'clock on this particular day, but you're not going to do all the preaching. Me and my friends, we're going to do some talking too. Originally, they had done a swap where the man had given Moody Tom Paine's book, and Moody had given him a Bible to read. And so he decided it was time for a showdown between these these two groups, and so they met. When the day came, Moody brought a young boy from the Sunday school with him, and arrived at the saloon and there seemed to be no one there and then found out that there had been so many people had showed up that they had to use a larger building next door. And so when he went into the building, here they all were and they were kind of uh, jovial and so on. But the man said, now we're going to speak first. And so they took 45 minutes and left Moody 15 at the end. They couldn't seem to agree. They were all at odds with one another, and their time was up. Moody said, now, we always open our meetings with a word of prayer. And so Moody and this young boy got down on their knees and began to pray. When Moody was finished, to everyone's amazement, the little boy began to pray. And this is what Moody wrote about this story. He says, I prayed, and after I finished, To all our surprise, the little boy prayed. I wish you could have heard him. He prayed to God to have mercy on those men who were talking so against his beloved son. His voice sounded more like an angel's than a human voice. And then he said, when he and I got up from our knees, I was going to speak, but there wasn't a dry eye in the place. One after another went out, And the old man I'd been after for months, and sometimes it looked pretty dark, came and putting his hands on my shoulder with tears streaming down his face said, Mr. Moody, you can have my children to go to your Sunday school. The next Sunday they came, and after a few months, his oldest boy, presently in the high school, stood up before the whole Sunday school and said, I wish to ask you to pray for me because I want to become a Christian. And Moody concluded, God answered our prayers. In all my acquaintances, I don't know of a family that seemed more hopeless to reach. Yet I believe if we lay ourselves out for the work, there isn't a person but can be reached and saved. I don't care who he is. If we go in the name of our master and persevere, It will not be long before Christ will bless us, no matter how hard their heart is. And he concludes with a portion of this verse from the King James, We shall reap if we faint not. Now, dear Christian, there may be somebody, and you were burdened at one time to pray for their salvation, and you 
got discouraged and you gave up. Maybe it's time to put them back at the top of your prayer list and see God work. It may be there's some family members and you think they're just too hard. They're never going to get saved. Well, I'll tell you, nobody's too hard for the Lord. He knows how to bring Nebuchadnezzar to his knees. He knows how to bring Saul of Tarsus to his knees. And so God can work in their lives as well. So let's lay hold of God. Let's trust him that his Holy Spirit will work. And remember these words, don't grow weary in doing good, for in due season we shall reap if we don't lose heart. <music>